Hey everybody, uh, I wanted to welcome you to Scale Kickstarter Backer Update Number One. <laughs> um, my name is Steve Swink, I'm the creator of Scale, that's me on the left there with the green shirt. I think I've broken Adam Sessler in this picture. So, uh, oh yeah, <laughs> I put this uh, note in here to remind myself to breathe. Because things have gotten really freaking exciting. So first things first, I just wanted to say a huge, gigantic, sky-filling thank you to all our backers. It's crazy. I cannot believe that we hit uh, such a large number on the first day. And if you, oh, oh, look at that. Something's blocking my thank you. It's 25%. Holy crap. Okay. So we have this projection of the amount of money that we wanted to make on the first day so that we thought we would be successful and you guys have completely blown it out of the water we're a quarter of the way there after the first day and it just keeps going up so thank you guys so much it's so awesome um, we're totally overwhelmed and humbled uh, I'm gonna go over here Boing. so just uh, a couple of administrative things first I'm just gonna move this in administrative house over here okay so the number the, the top two questions we got on the Kickstarter page were, do all backers get scale on all three platforms or do you just get to choose one of the three platforms? And the answer is all backers get scale on all three platforms, Mac, PC, and Linux. So I guess that's technically three copies, but um, I don't think of it that way. But that's the answer to the Freedom question. Freedom to continue uh, my Also, work. people asked if they get alpha access above a certain hmm, level. Anything and else? the answer to that is yes. So any backers above the $99 level will get alpha access as well. So a lot of people have been asking about, about my design process and, and what games I've been inspired by and so on. So I just wanted to kind of talk a little bit before I hang up the, uh, the Kickstarter backer update here. I think that when you create a game, the first thing that happens is that you play a lot of games and you get inspired. Like the reason why I wanted to play create games is because I played a lot of games and I was very inspired. And my tendency was, and I think this is a common tendency that a lot of people have, to play a game that's really good and think to yourself, man, they did so many things right, but here's what I would have done different. So for example, like Mirror's Edge, man, that game is amazing and the feel of it is great and, and the world is such a wonderful world to walk around and the art direction is amazing, but I, I kind of feel like they screwed the pooch on the level design, right? Like if it was sort of an open world game that lets you explore, I mean, they even had done a contiguous world, you know, you could, in theory, travel from one part of the, the level to the other. The city was contiguous, you, you can see that from the title screen. But if they just sort of made that an open game and let us explore that kind of like thief or something man that would have been so much better than what they did and also all the parts where you play through the level and then all of a sudden cops are chasing you and you just die a bunch of times no no bueno it's the, the world's greatest dick punch simulator ever since that's the dominating strategy for dealing with those cops um so then i think when you when you get a little bit more into making games and you, you're actually sort of starting to get versed in the tools you start to do a lot of analysis so i did this interesting thing i guess where i played through braid and I forced myself to write out every puzzle and draw out, you know, write out the steps that it took to complete each puzzle and then draw out um, the actual layout of the puzzle so that I had it so in my mind and, and very much force myself to understand it at a level that's much deeper than you would if you, when you're just playing it. Uh, and I think this leads to some insight and I think the, the main insight you get is instead of just thinking, oh man, I could make this better, you know, these are the things that I would do. I, I think, geez, man, they did so many things right. Like, it really flips the script on that idea. Um, yeah, and so I, I think that's the insight that you gain by actually trying to make a game. It's just, just the degree to which the people who've made games that you like have just totally killed it. Um, I think that reflection by developers, like such as what I'm doing right now, walking around telling you about things, will lead you to interesting ideas and give you inspiration about how to create your games. So, I don't know, here's, here's some examples of problems that we've solved in scale. So for example, when an object scales up, the amount that it scales by is non-linear. So as the object gets larger and larger, it starts to scale it by an exponential size because if it just scales linearly, it feels like it slows down scaling when it starts to get really large. So in order to have the scale feel right as the objects got bigger and bigger, we needed to make that a non-linear scaling. Uh, another example is the beam, right? So this is not really a Twitch game and it's not really about shooting the beam at specific objects and having it um, you know, react like a shooter. So we made it so that if the beam sweeps across an object, 
it sort of catches that object, right? So any object that it sweeps across, it catches. But you'll notice that when you do that, it doesn't lock onto a different object because I think that it's scale sort of delivered and, and when you choose the object that you want to scale, you don't want to have it glom onto another object. And we also sort of did this TF2 style beam that keeps indicating to you, no matter which way you're facing, which object it was that you were scaling. Something that we've been sort of fighting with, a problem that we haven't solved yet, is looking down at things, standing on things, and scaling those things. It's, this is kind of a tough one because in scale you spend a lot of time sort of like looking down at something and then scaling it to get a launch up or something like that. Unfinished animations, uh, pardon my animations there. Um, but the problem with this is that when you try to jump on objects and look down on objects, it, it's kind of fiddly and, and you can often fall off, especially if you make the objects really small. Like This is a huge pain in the butt Like if you wanted to jump on this. So we don't quite have a solution for that problem yet, um, but I think that we will, I mean, I'm confident that we will find a solution to it eventually. And, and one thing that we're going to try is, you know, when you step on something, it sort of gets squashed and then it'll bounce back up, boing, 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 um, so that when things are really small, they have to be sort of above a certain size before you can even jump on them, and otherwise they just kind of get crushed, which I think will be really funny with butterflies and things like that. So those things that I just told you are basically the result of struggling with the design a whole lot, and I think they lead to sort of design wisdom, if that makes sense. But I think that you know you gain knowledge from from listening to people's ideas and from sort of imbibing ideas that people give at lectures at the Game Developers Conference and so on. So John Blow is, is famous for trying to discover truth in game design and Will Wright has this great line about game design is half computer programming and half people programming. And those things are very inspiring, those ideas, especially when they flesh them out. But I think true wisdom can't be gained unless you struggle with a design. So, you know, knowledge is something that you can find in abundance on the internet. Knowledge is but knowledge is sort of only good for trivial pursuit, right? Like Wikipedia is full of facts and so on. But wisdom is something totally different entirely. I think wisdom in terms of game design and just in general in terms of uh, society and life and so on helps you make decisions in the present and plan for the future. And I think that game design is all about small, subtle decisions in the service of a greater whole. So wisdom allows you to make those decisions and solve those immediate problems, but also have those things fit into the larger structure of the game. So, I don't know, it just feels like when you've got something right, it just snaps right into place. And it's a very odd sensation, but it seems obvious in retrospect, even though you had to struggle to find it. You know, so sort of like, of course the beam works by sweeping onto objects and it won't lock onto other objects. And of course it, you know, will, when you scale something, keep bending around so it shows you where that thing is scaling. But I won't have to worry about that in the future, right? That, that design problem is solved. It totally works. It's no problem, right? Um, and I, I just kind of knew that. I didn't even have to play test it. I was just like, oh yeah, of course, obviously, like that totally works, and I don't have to worry about that anymore. The jumping on small objects thing is sort of a thing that we haven't quite solved yet, and I know that it's not right, just intuitively. I don't have to play test it with people to know that it's fiddly and hard to get on objects right now. And that that's a big problem, because in this game, of all games, you particularly can't you just can't uh, predict the size of objects as a designer, and you have to just kind of roll with that if you want to give players that sort of freedom. So anyway, here's a house. Oh, look at that. There's a tiny house inside it. This is an example of a puzzle that wasn't really shown in the trailer. Northern Lion did a great playthrough, too, if you want to see some more of the gameplay. You can find that linked in the press mentions area of the Kickstarter. Oh man, my tiny house fell over. Wake up, tiny house. Go, tiny house, go! Okay. I think you guys see what's happening here. Bonk. So we have these scales. Oh, that's supposed to have a 10 on it. Bugs, bugs, bugs. Making games is awesome. Huh. Well, I guess things are disappointing sometimes.